are a lot of people in this world who have this one, this single defining moment in their life. This one moment that changes their view, their opinion about the rest of their lives. But I don't have any moment like this in my life. I like to look at my life as many, many, many journeys. So some of these journeys could just be a few days, some a few weeks, some a few years, and some I don't even know if they're going to end. So today I'm going to talk about one of my journeys, my journey as a woman in STEM, as a woman in the sciences, and most importantly, my journey as an amateur physicist. So why physics? Physics explains how everything, how the world around us works. So the light bulb in your bedroom or the cell phone, which you have in your hand, which I hope is on silent, by the way. And, and even like the bottle opener that you have in your kitchen. All these things obey the laws of physics. An earthquake, a hurricane, or an avalanche, all these things can be explained using physics. So scientists for a long time believed that everything around us in the world could be explained by these simple, very understandable laws of physics. If I drop this on the ground, it's going to fall. If I try and run into the wall, I'm not going to be able to do that. So what else is there to study? So as the scientists delve deeper and deeper into what physics really is and reach this ultra-small universe, this ultra-small world, they realize that there are a lot of questions that are unanswered. There are a lot of things that we don't really know how to explain. This whole micro, subatomic world around us Something needs to be done about it. And the solution to that was quantum physics. So quantum physics seems really, really scary when I say it, but it's actually not that bad. I'm going to try my best to explain it as simply as possible. So at a very fundamental level, essentially, all these things like waves, vibrations, particles, all of these are basically described using energy probability and chance. And these little things like probability, chance, and energy, and vibrations help us understand how molecules, electrons, and atoms, and even love, friendship, relationships work. So the reason why I study physics and I try and do as much research as possible is to help me understand these relationships, these things that make a huge, huge part of my life and help me understand these things a little better. So as I'm growing up, and I still have a really, really long way to go, it, and especially in this stage of my life, I'm constantly thinking about how relationships work. What defines relationship? How, how do people interact with each other? What creates this, this bond between two people that sometimes you don't know how to explain? And physics has basically, quantum physics more specifically, has been my way of kind of understanding this and trying to make sense of what's going on. So my goal today is to just share with you, not make you believe, but just share with you my approach, my understanding of the world using quantum physics. So this took actually quite a bit of time to draw last night, so I hope you appreciate it. And so over here, what I'm trying to tell you is that human beings as a race, somehow we have seem, we seem to believe that we're the more dominant creature in the world right now. But if we like pull out a magnifying glass and look deep, deep, deep into who we actually are, we're actually made up of atoms and electrons. And these atoms and electrons, as you can see, is what everything around us, these very same atoms and electrons, is what you know, the oak tree outside your window or you know, the wooden chair which you may have been sitting on sometime yesterday. And you know, all these things, including us, are made up of these same fundamental particles. So why do we think we're different? So according to me, the way to understand relationships and how these things that we don't understand too well a little better is by bridging the gap between the micro world, these atoms and electrons and us, the bigger picture, the macro world, and trying to see these together entangled and with each other. So I'm going to start using one of my first examples. And this may seem a little complicated, but I'll try and explain it very simply. So this is something called Young's double slit experiment. So imagine you have this machine. This machine is constantly emitting and sending out electrons from it in all directions. So these electrons finally reach a net, a screen. So as soon as the electron touches the screen, you see a light on it. 
So if the electron goes from here and touches the screen, you see a bright light and you're like, okay, here, an electron has reached this part of the screen. So now imagine between this machine that's emitting electrons and this huge screen that you have here, you have another screen. This screen has two holes. It has two slits. So as soon as the light passes through the screen with slits, what do you expect to happen? We didn't know. So when the scientists did this experiment, they saw that on this main screen over here, they see many of these bright and dark spots alternating. And this was very mind-boggling to them. They didn't understand what was going on. They weren't sure how to explain this. Because think about it. You know, if you have light going through one slit, you just think of getting one bright spot on the screen. Why are we getting this weird pattern on the screen? Like, they didn't know what to do. So think you're an observer, and I'm an observer. I decide to just look at what's happening through one slit. So just look at one of the holes and see the light going through it. And then I look at the screen and I just see one bright spot. Then I'm a little confused. I'm like, just one second ago, I saw all these different types of spots on the screen and now I'm just seeing one spot. So I decide to look at the other slit. So I look at the second slit and I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna look at the light going through that slit. And I look at the screen once again and I'm like, there's just a bright spot. So what's exactly happening? So me as an observer, when I decide to change the way I'm looking at the experiment, change whether I'm looking at one slit or two slits, even though light is always going through both slits, when I decide which way I'm going to look at the experiment, I see a different outcome. So think about your life. OK, so you are going to give a TED talk today at this university. And you know, the past few days have been really rough for you. You, you know, your boss is really mad at you. Your sister is unwell. You have like a fever and you still have, you've committed to giving a TED talk. You still have to talk in front of, you know, 100 people on stage. What are you going to do? You have to go stand there, be confident and talk. So you stand on stage, you start talking, but the past week has really affected you. you you're kind of shaky, you're a little nervous, you're not able to you know, make sure the audience understands what you're trying to say very clearly. So basically, overall, you haven't done the best job according to a lot of people. So somebody in the audience, you don't know that person. That person is an observer looking at you. You are just like the electron in this experiment at this moment. So that person is looking at you, and their opinion of you is really bad. They think you're so unprepared. You didn't take this event seriously. They basically don't think you've done a very good job at all. However, right next to that person sitting in the audience is your brother. Your brother knows what you've been through for the past few days, and he thinks you've actually done a very good job considering the circumstances you've been through. So their opinion of you is very different. I am one object, I'm still the electron, but we have two different observers looking at you. And depending on how the observation has changed, the reality, the outcome of my interaction with them, how I perceive they are looking at me, the energy I share with them is going to change. So all I'm trying to conclude from this is that depending on how you choose to observe something, reality can change. And this was something that was discovered by Young many, many, many years ago through his quantum experiment. And this is my way of understanding experiences that I've been through where, you know, as soon as I change the way I look at somebody or change the way I feel about somebody, I, there's a completely new outcome. So my second experiment that I want to talk about, which is also my last experiment, is something that's very, very, very close to my heart. So two summers ago, I worked uh, at a physics lab uh, close to Chicago, and I worked on this phenomenon called quantum entanglement. Sounds complicated, but think about this. You have two human twins, that are born at the same time, of course. One is now, many, many years later, one is in Iran, and one is somewhere in Australia. And the twin who's in Australia got a promotion in his job, and he's really happy. But somehow, the twin who's in Iran knows that. How does he know that? How does he know that, you know, my twin brother is just really happy at this moment. He's doing really well. I feel like I have a gut feeling that something's going really well in his life. How does he know that? Now, this, in the same way, you can draw an analogy and think of two quantum entangled particles. So these two quantum entangled particles, as soon as they come into life, as soon as they are born together, 
no matter where they are in space and time, no matter where they are in this universe, they are correlated in a quantum way. They know what the other person is thinking and feeling at all time. Each particle knows what their twin particle is going through. And a very fun and interesting example is the one on the screen here. You have this red, you have these twin particles. One is red in color and one is yellow in color. They're both light particles. So the red light hits this cutout drawing of a cat, okay? And then the red light takes its own direction. Now this yellow twin of the red light decides to intersect, directed by humans, of course, with this red light at a particular defined angle which we find. Now this yellow light is then directed to a camera. The picture that the camera sees is one of the red cat. Now how is this possible? This red light doesn't even reach the camera. And this yellow light, all it had to do was interact with the red light. It had to just know that the red light exists. It had to know that its twin exists and it could draw exactly what the twin was seeing. So this is basically quantum entanglement. And even though it doesn't interact with it in reality, when we see the camera, we see the outcome of what its twin actually saw. So the way I like to look at this is, imagine a day that you know, you're really low, something's not right, you lock yourself in your room, you're just not feeling good. It's one of those days when you know, everything is basically falling apart. You get a text from your mother saying, hey, I hope you're okay. You know, I hope everything's fine. I have a feeling that, you know, that something's not right. Just wanted to know that I'm here if you want to talk. How does she know? How does she have this feeling? How, do, how does she know that something's wrong, even though she's in India and I'm here in Worcester? So think of it as when you and when you were born and you and your mother come in contact for the first time in physical contact with each other, you are together and connected for life. No matter where you are in the world, you will always be connected. And I like to look at it just like these two photons, these two particles of light. No matter where they are, they'll, the yellow light will always be able to see the red cat that the red light went through. So this phenomenon was kind of stumbled upon by Einstein in 1935. And he was very confused by this. He, he, he couldn't explain it, he didn't understand it, he never even believed it. And he liked to call it the spooky action at a distance force, you know? Even if you're not close to it, you're far away. From a distance, you're acting on your twin and you know what's happening. And I like to look at a lot of events in my life that way. So in conclusion, there are a lot of relationships that I formed in my life. There's a lot of bonds, this this friendship, this love that I feel for people that sometimes I just don't know how to explain. And it's just been on my mind for the past few years. How do I go about this? How do I wrap my head around how I'm feeling about this? And quantum physics and physics in general has just been my way to answering that question. So when you go home tonight, just take you know a couple of minutes just to think about a time in your life where you've experienced this feeling. You felt this uncertainty, why, why am I feeling like this? I don't know. It could be related to, you know, your work. It could be a relationship between you and your mother, you and your father, you and your sister, you and your work, you and yourself. But to understand it better, I urge you just to consider and think about some of these quantum things that we spoke about today. Thank you.